Hi, my brothers and sisters in Jesus. I haven't talked to you in a little bit. A um, little bit, uh, I was a little bit pooped after the uh, San Diego kickstart. So many awesome things happened. Even blind eyes uh, were opened and uh, just beautiful things. Many people baptized and delivered. And uh, I'm actually was waiting and hoping to put together a kind of a video recap of everything that happened and so on. And I will do that. But um, the devil's been working hard to keep that video footage uh, from getting to me. So, uh, but that's happening. And uh, God bless uh, those that are working hard to get that to me. So that's awesome. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you today about preaching the entire gospel, the whole gospel. I grew up in a charismatic uh, church. And uh, I didn't realize that I thought, you know, we had it all figured out. But I didn't really realize it, and yet my eyes are beginning to open, or have opened now, on many things. And I realized I wasn't under the full gospel. And you'll hear this, and the things I'm going to teach about today are challenging. So I'm going to challenge some of your faith, but I want you to be like the Bereans and study it out and see if it's true. I'm going to preach the whole gospel, not just part of the gospel. So I'm going to show you scriptures today that actually appear to be conflicting. And what's happened is um, different camps in the body of Christ have gone different directions. And so nobody's preaching the entire gospel, only their uh, slant of it. So what I'm going to do is show you that there isn't actually a conflict and these things actually uh, mesh perfectly together. In fact, some of the conflicts are between Paul's own writings and, uh, and, and the difference between, uh, for salvation, what uh, Peter and Paul did to get people saved was different uh, in appearance. It appears that it's different that, uh, than, say, Romans 10, 9, where Paul says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. So look, without getting too far into it, let me go back to the beginning and give you some uh, conflicts that we see in the Bible. Okay, so um, I'm going to put the words on afterwards here. So I'm just going to uh, read for you. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Now, anybody who's preaching a half gospel will leave verse 10 out. They only go 8 and 9. So here it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. So grace, referring to the death of Jesus to pay for our sins when we, he didn't have to do that and we didn't deserve it. So that's the grace of God. The gra so it is by grace you have been saved through faith. So, oops, sorry guys. So through faith, what does that mean? Um, yeah, so, uh, and this is not from yourselves. It is, uh, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, now, many people will use the scripture to say that basically, and this is the problem with the evangelical church, lots of talking, not so much doing, because everything's grace and faith, and no action. <laughs> not no action, but I shouldn't say that. There are good Christians that are taking action, but many people have fallen into a spectator gospel and in uh, certain denominations and uh, and so we watch the the, the preachers the one who uh, who does the baptizing in water baptizing the Holy Spirit special people are on the prayer team to heal the sick special people and so you're back to the lay people and clergy uh, kind of mentality uh, which was never meant we we're supposed to live as disciples Philip we see in the book of Acts uh, who preached to the centurion it was Philip uh, who baptized the centurion. Did he say, no, i got to take you to my pastor and get you baptized now. That water won't do. No, he baptized him, of course, because that was his job as a disciple. Uh, it also says that when he prayed for the lame, people completely paralyzed guys. They, they were able to walk afterwards. They were healed. And uh, it says the demons came up with shrieks. So he was doing deliverance. All the stuff, guys, it's all meant for us. And the job of the pastor, of course, and all these other roles in the church is to equip us to do this stuff. So instead of teaching us everything from scratch, we should be being taught how to teach other, each other and how to go and do these things. I lived as a Christian for uh, 20, 30 years in the church and had never baptized 
anyone, had never baptized any, got anyone baptized in the Holy Spirit, had never done so many uh, of the things, uh, healing I did a little bit of, um, but, uh, uh, you know, casting out demons, uh, all that stuff, that's for us to do. That's our job as disciples. Uh, Philip, by the way, was not one of the 12 apostles. He was a disciple. He was someone who uh, who God got a hold of and he decided he was going to do it. And uh, anyway, so getting back to the scripture here, it says that we've been saved through grace. Uh, so that's interesting to say, but the question and one of the reasons why I'm starting doing this teaching is because so many people say, I'm praying in faith and no miracles are happening. And I'm going to actually illuminate for you that actually um, many people, what they think is faith isn't faith because faith is not just believing it's believing with action, believing like uh, the difference between faith would be uh, with believing and not is someone can say, I see a chair there. Another person, it's an, a completely another thing to say, I see a chair there and then sit in it and trust that chair is going to support your weight. And uh, and really, that's the difference between what I see when people come out and first pray on the streets and they're not seeing any miracles um, they're praying, but they don't have a true expectation something is going to happen. And that comes from a spectator gospel where someone else has always done everything, and so we're just infants and never even tried out our faith. Uh, but anyway, let me get back to this. So here's the conflict here. I'm just going to switch uh, switch hands here because I can't keep going at the same time. So um, we're going to compare Ephesians 2.8, where it talks about being saved. Uh, by grace to an apparent conflict that we see in James chapter 2, verse uh, 14 through 26. It says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Now listen to this. He says this. Listen. This is the Bible. Okay? It's in your Bible. Read it for yourselves. Can such a faith save them? Wow. Okay. Never, ever had any preacher ever, anywhere stand up and preach this to me. Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. Whoa, check that out, guys. Okay, we've heard faith without works is dead, but come on, dig into this. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by actions, is dead. And it goes on to say, but, in the, but, but someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. And this is the typical thing we see in the church, um, with spectator gospel church. Uh, everything's segregated. You do the healing, you do the prophecy, you do this, and I'll do this. Uh, and he's saying, "What if we'll just split it up? This guy is faith, and this guy is deeds. What's the problem?" And he said, "Then he goes on to say, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds.'" So it's an interesting slant he takes. Uh, you believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So he's saying, faith, you know. Demons have faith in God, but that's not a saving faith. That's what he's trying to say to you because he starts this thing, whole thing out as a question with a question, can such a faith save them? Hmm. Can such a faith save them? And he says, he makes a point that even the demons believe and shudder. Demons are believers, guys, but that doesn't save them. Okay, he's, then he goes on to say, you foolish person, Okay, not me preaching you, yeah, this is the Bible. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Useless, guys. Useless means without use, of no good, doesn't do anything. Okay, remember, what's the question? Can such a faith save them? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Key. His faith was made complete by what he did. So what does that say? If 
you have faith and you don't do anything, your faith is not complete. And that's why when you pray for miracles, you won't see them because your faith isn't complete. There must be an action to your faith. You might have to get out there and believe in a way that you're willing to sit on that chair. You're willing to real to say for sure. And for me, if you see my videos, you know where that point is for me? When I say, okay, we're going to pray for you and God's going to heal you right now. Okay? And so many people write me and say, how can you say that? But that's my point at which I'm throwing myself out there and adding an action. I'm saying, I'm going to throw this out there and I'm going to tell you God's about to heal you right now. And guess what? They get healed. <laughs> you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. See, so many times we get a half gospel. So how many times have you heard that that uh, he believed God and was credited to, his, to him as righteousness, but they fail to recognize the previous scripture that talks about how his faith was expressed by offering Isaac up uh, on the altar. See, he had to take action to his faith before his faith was complete. And we need complete faith to see miracles happen. So that's why I want to do this is to benefit you. Now, let's, let's bump back to... Uh, Ephesians and read that again because it just said you're saved. Uh, this is saying, you know, can such a faith save them? And he's clearly saying that if your faith has no action, it's not a saving faith. He's saying faith without works is dead. It won't work. It's not working for you. So wake up call to the church. Uh, we need to have action. And of course, if you're if you really are in Christ and spending time with him, the Holy Spirit is always pushing you to do something. Uh, and, and add action to your faith. Um, and uh, he's always encouraging us, you know. Uh, but um, so many people have fallen asleep in the church and uh, and sadly are not taking action anymore. They feel that, they think that just by sitting down and listening to someone talk, that's their action. And that's not action, that's just being baby spoon-fed, basically. Uh, it's like eating pablum, Uh it's awesome. Not, I'm not knocking it, guys. I love it when people teach the word. We, 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 we do that all the time with each other. Uh, we want that. But um, that isn't enough. You have to then take action. So um, going back to Ephesians says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this faith is not from yourselves. It is, a, is the gift for, uh, of God. Now stop here. Okay, so... What he's saying here is that the faith that you need to initially get saved, see, it says you have been saved, okay? Um, so, but you know, if you were to walk away from Christ today, then you're not saved. So you, you're in the process of being saved your entire life. And I can give you lots of scriptures for that. That's another teaching. So he's, but he's talking about the initial point of salvation. There is a point at which we pass from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, and that's faith, and that faith comes from Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about in Ephesians 2. He's not saying that you should live in this place your entire Christian walk. He's saying that you were saved, uh, through, uh, by, saved by grace through faith. So your faith is a saving faith initially, and even that is a gift of God. So he says, not by works, so that no one can boast. So your works will not save you. You can't just do works without faith. That won't work. But the converse is true. We see from James that you can't then say, so I'm going to have faith, but do no works because that doesn't work either. That's not a saving faith. So we need to have our faith needs to propel us into doing good works. And of course, the part that no one preaches when they talk about that point in Ephesians 2, 8, they don't go on to 10 where it says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Stop. You were created, you were created, you were created to do good works. Uh, and it says, which God prepared in advance for you to do. So Jesus Christ has prepared you and created, Jesus Christ has created you to do good works. He created you for this. He created you to do good works. I'm breaking off 
some of the, the chains that have been on uh, the Christians, your purpose is to do good works. He created you to do that. It says that. Uh, and it says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So all the stuff you're, you're, the Holy Spirit gives you to do, uh, that's because God's prepared it for you in advance. And the question is, will you do it? And, um, and so your faith goes dead when you don't actually do it. So from here you see there's actually not a conflict in the scriptures at all. Uh, that uh, sure, there's an initial saving faith. But if you stay in that place and never progress, and it doesn't propel you into works, then likely you didn't actually get a saving faith in the first place. You didn't actually believe because actual belief always creates action. Um, so there's one other scripture I want to bring up here. So um, in Romans 10, 9, it says, okay, so let's talk about some practical examples because we see this is what the error has created a false doctrine in terms of how we get people saved. So uh, we, we read in Romans 10, uh, verse 9 and 10, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Okay. He is talking about the initial moment of salvation. He's talking about that first point when you believe. But did Paul practice this? What did Paul actually do? It goes on to say, um, it says, for it, is, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Okay, so what did Paul actually do, guys? Paul actually baptize people when he when they wanted to get saved always um, and uh, you'll see many times they'll talk in the book of Acts they'll talk about the jailer and how he talks about his faith and that's what saved him but they skip a few lines later it says enti his entire family him and his family were, were, were baptized his whole house was baptized and so we see that baptism is the first act of faith that we do. Because remember, faith that works is dead. Faith requires an action. And so it's one thing to look at a chair and say, yes, that's a chair. It's quite another thing to sit in the chair and trust it's going to support your weight. You must have action. And even in Romans 10, 9, for people that say, oh, there can't be any action. It's all by faith. Well, I'm going to show you some action. Even in Romans 10, 9, it says, or in 10, 10, it says, for it is with your heart that you believe, okay, and that's the gift of God to believe and are justified. And then it says, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith. That means you have to speak it out. That's an action, guys. This, this thing here doesn't go for free. It, it's work. You have to do it. So there's a work to it. Uh, so faith without works is dead. So my faith from my heart, right, then comes out as an action. And it says, profess with your, uh, profess, so it says, um, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Now, there are lots of places where it talks about baptism and how it's part of the salvation process. And people try to explain it away. They don't preach the whole gospel. We want to explain the whole thing. So there are places in the Bible, and you can look it up, where it says, uh, it talks about, uh, it says, baptism, which now saves you. And so uh, can you do a baptism without believing and, and that save you? Absolutely not. You have to have that initial faith that Paul's talking about in Romans 10, 9. You have to have that. But then the action comes to a profession, and then it comes to uh, an action because Jesus commanded the first thing, if you're a believer and you haven't got baptized, then you skip the very first commandment that Jesus has given us. He's commanded us all to be baptized. And so you're, to express your faith, you have to get baptized. And if you actually look at the baptism process, it is uh, like James talks about. He says, I'll, I'll show you my faith through my actions. And when you go down in the water, you're dying with Christ. And when you go up, come up out of the water, you're rising with Christ. You're, you're taking your faith to the action stage. See, it's not a separate event. It's a action of faith. And so it's not a work. It's no more, you know, getting dunked in water is, 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 is no more work than it is 
in my opinion anyway, it's real easy to go psh, psh in the water, right? Uh, confessing your face, speaking is an action. That's work too. Everything's everything except for just the act, just the believing, which is a gift from God, is a work. So um, works are supposed to happen. We're supposed to be doing it. Faith without works is dead. And uh, as James says, can such a faith save them? Can it? And the Bible's saying, no, it can't. You need to have action. Can you save yourself through action? Absolutely not. Because it's a gift of God. The initial faith comes from God. So I've torn apart and pulled apart for you guys this concept. And uh, applying it to healing, which uh, a lot of you watch this channel to to see, you know, how do I do this and how do I get into this? Um, you need to uh, just add action to your faith. And the best way to do that is to come out and get kickstarted because when you see other people doing it and you say, oh, somebody else can sit in the chair and it holds their weight, okay, then then I, maybe I have faith to sit in that chair, right? So uh, so faith is catchy. The Lord has allowed us to uh, to be a group and, and be able to, to um, learn from one another. He calls it discipleship. So come out and get discipled. And uh, remember, when you're out on the streets doing miracles, your goal isn't just the miracle, but to make a disciple. And so that brings this full circle, guys. Um, because we changed uh, the gospel and got written and just went with some of the things Paul said, and then even though every single conversion in the book of Acts includes a baptism, we somehow ripped those two things apart and said, Believe here, and then maybe a few months later, and you take some classes, you get baptized, and that's not the gospel. That's not what they did. Read your book of Acts. Every conversion had a baptism. Even if it, 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 I realize it can happen exactly at the same time, but it, you can see the immediacy as you see it. Like um, even when Peter came to Cornelius's house, the Holy Spirit fell on them. They began speaking in tongues. What did Peter say? Did he say, okay? give him some teaching and a few weeks baptize him. He says, no, he just says he gave orders to have them baptized. Boom, get it done. And, um, and notice that it wasn't him that was doing the baptism. You see, it's not for the clergy to do. It's for you to do, the disciples to do. So those disciples that had come with him went around baptizing. He just said, hey, get it done, get it baptized. So we have to come back to the real gospel that we see in the Bible, guys. It's really important. It's really important, guys. As, as we go out there and get closer and closer to what we read about in the Bible, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit confirms uh, the word. And uh, he does that uh, if we are not just preaching the word, but doing the word. And we have to, but we have to preach the entire gospel. So if, if someone's preaching faith and grace alone and isn't preaching that we need to then do works, he isn't preaching the entire gospel. And you can be sure he's not going to be uh, preaching James 2 verse 14 where it says, can such a faith save them? I never heard anyone preach that specific scripture in my entire life in 30 years sitting in a spectator gospel church. So uh, it's time, guys, to ch turn everything around. Well, by the way, I'm not against the church one, one bit, but the f church does need a reformation. It does need to change to align itself with the word of God. We've had some amazing reformations in the past um, where, you know, there was a time when the Catholic church, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to pick on the Catholic church, but it's just history, was selling indulgences. You could actually buy uh, your way out of sin. And we know that's not God. And so we had reformations throughout history to bring the church back into alignment with the word of God. Well, we had we kind of went overboard with faith and grace, so much so in the last 50 years or so, uh, that uh, and we see the power has left the churches. In many cases, you go to a church, there's no miracles. And why is there no miracles? Because we're preaching half a gospel. We have to preach the entire gospel. And when we go out and get someone saved, our goal is not just to get them to pray a prayer, pray a few truths that we've extracted out of Paul's writings and letters. He that wasn't what they did. When they wanted to get when people wanted to get saved in the book of Acts, you can see it. Paul did it, Peter did it. They just simply uh, they did repent be baptized, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You can see in Acts 2.38, read it for yourself. He preaches, they believe. Because of their belief, they say, what do we need to do to be saved? He says, repent, 
be baptized and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so that's the process that we take people through now and, and not the pastor's pastor's job is to equip me to do it and my job is to equip you to do it you see how that works and that's called making disciples and so if we all begin to do this guys uh we'll see miracles everywhere in the churches again even if churches are willing to um to come back to what the word of god says so we're not responsible guys for errors that we make um until we hear the truth and uh, either accept or reject it and then at that point we're responsible So if you're hearing this message and it's really challenged you, I want to say I bless you in the name of Jesus and I encourage you to check your Bible out and study it and ask yourself, and I know in your heart, many of you have read those other scriptures and said, this just doesn't mesh. It's like there's a conflict in the Bible, but there is no conflict. I explained it to you today. Yes, there's an initial saving faith, but that goes on to works because we can show our faith through our works, as James says. So uh, that's the gospel, guys. That's the Bible. And if you read it in the light that I've shown you, there are no conflicts, which tells you it's the right interpretation. When the Bible seems to conflict itself, it means you have the wrong interpretation. So we need to repent. A repentance isn't like, oh, I'm so bad. Oh, I'm so sorry. Repentance actually means to think again. It means, oh, I was thinking about it wrong. Oh, I get it now. So I'm going to change my viewpoint. So that's awesome. Hey, I'm going to throw in a couple of miracle clips and uh, you can watch this. Um, some people were criticizing me about uh, pointing and praying. So I actually lay hands a few times in this video and you can see the Holy Spirit uh, is, is, is healing uh, and, and they feel uh, the tingling and everything, you know, just by laying hands. So it doesn't matter how we do it, guys. Mark 16, 17 says that we don't even have to pray. We can actually just lay hands and they'll recover. So I did a bit of that just to demonstrate the gospel. We have a lot of freedom on the streets as long as we're ready to preach the gospel and make disciples, not just get them to say a prayer because that just ends it right there, but to actually go get them baptized and start a relationship and actually make them disciples of Jesus Christ. That's what we were commanded to do. Jesus spent 90% of his time teaching 12 people. Yes, he spoke to the crowds, but 90% of his time, he was walking with them from city to city, talking, laying down, and they they reclined when they were eating. They'd lay down and eat together and just hang out. That was discipleship. That's what they did. He invested in 12 people. Then, just before he ascended, and how many people know the last words that anyone says before a long trip, before they're gone for a long time. So when Jesus left, the last words that he said, the last words that people say are the important ones, right? So when Jesus left, he said this, he said, now you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and so on and so forth and teaching them all that I've commanded you to do. And what did he command them to do? He commanded them in Luke 10 to go out and heal the sick and preach the gospel and do all the stuff. So let's just change the church around so that you're equipped to do all those things. If you're not equipped, come to a kickstart. We'll train you how to do it. And uh, yeah, God bless. Enjoy these videos and uh, go and do likewise. Hi, I'm Doug. I'm here with George. And I'm here with... Okay, this is my friend. Okay. Okay. All right. And, we're gonna... and she tells me she has back pain and pain in, in her legs. So we're going to pray for you right now, and and uh, all the pain is going to go, in, in Jesus' name. Yeah, listen, listen, Okay. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. In the name of Jesus, all back pain, I command you, go right now. All vertebrae. All ligaments, all tendons, all muscles be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I command life into her lower back and into her legs right now. I command 100% blood flow. Knee pain, go. All leg pain, I command you to go. Legs be healed right now. Back be fully healed right now in the name of Jesus. There we go. Uh, okay, now, move around, check it. Move around. Yeah. Is, is this a Huh? 
بتفتح انا نفسي يعني يعني جرابي شو شوفي لو الوجع لسه هناك يعني لازم يروح من صار لازم يروح يعني لازم يروح يعني هو هو لسه هناك شويه هناك لسه اوكي شي ستيل ليتل بي بين ليفت اوكي سو اي دونت سبيك يور لانجويج But in the Bible, it says that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Mm. So I'm Amen. just going to lay hands on the sick. Tell her that in uh, your language. Do you understand what it is? It means that we're going to pray. In the Bible, it says that we're going to put our hands on someone. Yes, that's right. Okay. Now, ask her if she feels something right now. Something's going on. In, in, هل تحس أي حاجة في جسمك؟ لا 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 I can feel the Holy Spirit. Tell her I can feel the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Check again now. No. Uh, uh, tingling. Tingling. Binamil, sah? Binamil. This is what. Binamil. Yeah. And, no, and notice I'm holding this. I'm putting my hand on this side of your body. So we know it's Holy Spirit, not just energy healing. Some people are saying it was energy healing. So I'm touching here. But yeah. the Holy Spirit knows On what's wrong where it's at. over there. Exactly. So you see, we're following the that, scriptures. That Ruh al Qudus. Yeah. That the Holy Spirit right now. God, Forgive me. pray in no other name but the name Only of Only the name Jesus. of Jesus. But in this circumstance, I follow Mark 16, 17, 18, right in that zone there, where it says we can lay hands on the sick and, and the recover. sick will recover. So demonstrating that scripture Amen. now. Okay, now check your back. Check your back. Is it a glick? Is it a glick? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. She still feels like the, the tingling in her tingling. leg. That's the Holy Spirit, tell her that's Holy Spirit. That, 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 that Holy Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's Holy, Holy Spirit. You feel something pulling your no, back? back? Yeah. You see that? Yeah, yeah, you can see it perfect. It's that much, guys. Um, not much. Yeah, I can, okay. oh, I can see it perfect. This? Okay, so I'm going to pray, you watch. Yes. Watch this. I'm going to command it to grow, okay? Yeah. So, watch this. Uh, left foot, grow in the name of Jesus right now. Foot grow right now. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. More, 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 Amen. more, Amen. Hallelujah. more, yes, more. Lord. Come out, more. come out, come out, come out. More, more, more. You watching it? You see it grow? You see? Yeah. Come out more, more. more. Left leg, grow in the name of Jesus. Grow. More in the name of Jesus. Come out. Left leg grow. More. 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 Hassa. Yeah. But do you do you see now? Look. Look at. Look at. Hassa. Look. Hassa, brother. Tila. Safer. Amen. It's even now. Perfect. Yeah. Now get up and walk. Now Umi, we'll get up it. Sufi. Walk around now. How do you feel? Good. Any pain? Good. The pain, the pain go? The pain. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Okay, here. Awesome. Watch. Thank you. I'm going to show her.